r slash ask reddit what knowledge might save your life one day polar bears have insane adhd if one is chasing you intermittently drop clothing items like a hat or gloves it will stop to sniff them normal prey animals don't shed whole pieces of themselves the bear will be perplexed so on reddit somewhere else if you call 911 always say where the problem is first followed by the problem if you happen to get cut off before you can say what the problem is at least the dispatcher has a location to send an officer to to check it out and advise if more police or fire is needed example operator 911 where is your emergency you help i am being stabbed disconnect versus operator 911 where is your emergency you 742 evergreen terrace help i am disconnect location 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 sideshow bob can stab faster than you can explain makes sense firefighter training if there is a fire crawl out of the building do not stand up to run one or two breaths of smoke are enough to do major damage and require hospitalization if you get out at all it may be warm where you are crawling but standing up can cook your skin and your lungs the smoke at our level can be more than 600 degrees celsius 1200 degrees fahrenheit if you can't see and don't know the room layout crawl with your feet legs in front of you sliding on your ass do not crawl face first or you may take a dive down the staircase in the confusion i remember reading in a reddit post similar to this that if you can't do a pull up you probably won't have the strength to pull yourself up off a ledge and that has stuck with me ever since in theory it's very true, but I would guess most people could if some serious adrenaline is involved. The instinct of wolves will only cause them to attack hunt you if they can intimidate you into fleeing from them. Standing your ground against a wolf pack will be terrifying, but will eventually cause them to bugger off. Tigers as well. Don't turn your eyes away from a tiger. There is a story of a boy that had to walk backwards for 3 hours back to his village being stalked by a tiger. The cost benefit of a prey animal even slightly hurting a tiger is not worth it. It could mean a death sentence in the wild. That water you're about to dive into might not be as deep as you think. Always just step in and swim down to check for depth, then jump. If the tide suddenly goes out unexpectedly, run like you stole it, for higher ground. I read about a 10 year old English girl who had just learned this before going on vacation with her family to Thailand. Then the big tsunami that killed a few hundred thousand came. She saw the water retreat and the other tourists walk out on the exposed seafloor. She freaked out and convinced everybody to run for higher ground. A lot of people were saved by a little girl who had paid attention in school. They later brought a lot of flowers to the teacher. Imagine how terrifying that must be, knowing that a huge unstoppable wave is traveling hundreds of kilometers per hour to your location. And most people don't listen to you, just thinking you're a stupid kid who doesn't know any better. If you are ever bitten by a bat, raccoon, fox, or skunk go directly to the hospital. There is no cure for rabies once it is fully onset. Out of all history only 5 people survived rabies. If you're ever charged by a moose, get behind a tree. They have about a 10 inch blind spot and they'll lose you. That's what Ski Patrol would always say when there were an increase in moose sightings on the mountain. They'd tell you to stay out of the trees when skiing, unless a moose is running at you. Then find trees because unless you've got a steep hill or are already up to speed, the moose is probably faster than you think. All snakes in Victoria, Australia are venomous. If you've been buried alive in a standard coffin, stay calm. If you are alive you haven't been buried that long. Also the dirt above you hasn't set yet. Most coffins are not built to last once buried and as a result have weak siding. So here is what you do. Pull your shirt over your head. You don't want to be swallowing dirt. Position yourself so you are as sideways in the coffin as possible with hands and feet pushing on the long sides. Push. You should be able to blow out one of the walls. Start crawling up. Do not panic. You may not find a grip immediately. Keep going until you make it out. If you have to get out of a moving car then put one foot down and take a step don't just jump out. This will reduce your speed immensely. Sure you will fall over but at a much reduced speed. A stunt man told me this. 
I had to leave a moving car that was going about 40 miles per hour. I was pregnant. I had a medium sized purse and a pillow. The man driving the car had said he was going to kill us both if he couldn't have me and was going in and out of oncoming traffic. I grabbed my bag and pillow and held the pillow across my stomach and opened the door and thought if I go like a rag doll except my arm holding my stomach and my other arm with my purse covered my face. But everything else I tried to relax. I stepped out and let myself fall and roll. It was amazing. I ended up with just a handful of bruises and scrapes and I was fine. And my daughter is 14 now. We made it. I read this possibly on another thread or even on this one. If you smell something close to fish or even urine it's possible you may have an electrical fire. Electrical fires tend to smell like fish and, when exposed to high heat, urine. Or maybe your cat had a snack and decided to pee on the carpet. What won't kill you in Australia? The wildlife. What will kill you? Getting lost in the outback. If you're lost and out of fuel, stay with your vehicle. Move as little as possible during the day and stay in the shade. Conserve water. Rip off wing mirrors to shine at any search planes. You can drink your urine approx 1-3 times before your kidneys start to pack it in. This is absolute last resort. To be fair, the wildlife can also kill you. Plot twist. Lost in the Australian outback and a roo enters the passenger seat, points a gun at your head, and tells you to relocate. EMT here. If you're ever choking on food in a public venue do not go to the restroom to avoid causing a scene. Almost every death I've seen from people choking are found unconscious in a bathroom stall because they were too polite to seek help. I feel like if there's any situation in which it's okay to not be polite, it's when you're choking to death. 120 people will get bowel cancer in their lifetime. You need some sort of screening starting at age 45-50 depending on your family history. Any blood in the stool needs to be checked out. Early cancers can be completely cured with keyhole surgery. You don't have to die of bowel cancer. If you're a pedestrian and crossing a street, if you can see the sun's reflection on the windshield of a car, there's a good chance the driver can not see you. If you've been carjacked and the carjacker tells you to just drive, take whatever chance you get to wreck. At minimum, you're getting emergency services involved, meaning it's more likely they'll be caught, and there's a chance you'll incapacitate or even kill the carjacker. Of course, there's also a chance that you might not survive, but, if they're taking you to a second location, odds are you weren't going to come back anyway. You don't even need to wreck. I doubt carjackers put on their seatbelts. And if they do just push the release button before you up the speed jam the brakes and watch that mother ducker fly through the windscreen. If you're alone and start choking with nobody around to give you the Heimlich, you can give yourself the Heimlich by using the back of a chair, or similar objects like the sidearm of a couch or whatever. Forcefully throw your stomach over the back of the chair a few times. Try to mimic the motion of the Heimlich. Push in above the belly button, then up, kind of like a J motion. I always try to remember this but anytime I think I'm slightly choked this logic goes out the window. If you fall into cold open water, resist the urge to swim and try to float until the onset of panic subsides. Once you have your breathing under control you can then start to swim to safety. By doing this you will not hyperventilate and avoid potentially drowning. Contrary to common myth. You can file a missing persons report before 24 hours have passed. Putting it off a day because they went missing that night could very easily be the difference between them being found or not. Or maybe not your life, but everyone should have basic first aid CPR training if possible. My dad collapsed on Saturday morning when he got up to go to the toilet and neither me or my mum know basic first aid or CPR. The ambulance took 8 minutes to arrive and we only live 4 streets away from the depot. Luckily he came too. But there was a point where he stopped breathing. If he continued to not breathe 8 minutes would be too late. Please learn and hope you don't need it. Instead of needing it and not knowing. If your car is going underwater, an electronic roll down button will work regardless of the water pressure outside the car. But a manual handle is much more difficult. You also won't be able to open the door. It's better to have something in the glove box, like an ice scraper, to break the glass with. Mythbusters did a whole thing on it. That episode saved a woman's life. She wrote to them to tell them and Adam Savage cried knowing he'd helped to save a life. 
A friend who grew up in a rough neighborhood taught me this one. If you're on a bus and robbers get on, you have a chance of not having your stuff taken or being bothered at all if you pretend to be asleep. For all that it's scary for the passengers when one or two duckers with guns climb on a bus. It's also stressful f for the robbers. They have to keep their eyes on a lot of people at once to prevent anyone from calling the police, prevent the driver from signaling distress somehow, and prevent all passengers from reacting in dangerous ways. If you're asleep, that's one person less for a robber to manage. So they may not bother to wake you up and have another wild card to deal with, just to get your phone and wallet. If the robbers get on and every single passenger is asleep, they may decide not to bother at all depending on how widely the bus driver is grinning at them and how warmly it welcomes them into its domain. If you are in danger or in need of help, in a public place, it's almost always a bad idea to just yell help. It's more important to be specific. Pointing at someone and telling them to call 911 will be more effective. The bystander effect can be a real beach sometimes. I tell my kids to break windows if someone is attacking them or the like. Yelling help may not get cops, breaking windows will. I'll gladly pay for windows to keep my kids safe. I can't replace my kids. Direct pressure on bleeding is always the first step. On mobile so no good link but a stop the bleed class is a great way to learn more and practice things like applying a tonic A. Search for one in your area, usually only an hour long or so. If you're taking blood thinners, you should know they increase the risks of bleeding. You should watch out for signs of bleeding like pallor, breathlessness, multiple rash, bleeding gums or nose, red urine. If you accidentally cut yourself, take great care of the cut. You could bleed out if you don't. At the pharmacy today a regular patient died because she got a cut on her leg while gardening, but didn't think much about it, but because she was on blood thinners, she bled out during the night. Wear a helmet, wear a seat belt. It may not be cool, but you're more fragile than you led yourself to believe. I've lost 3 friends because of these. Don't be a statistic please. There's someone that would miss you and think I just wish they had put a helmet seat belt on. If you're being followed quickly try and hug someone nearby and whisper in their ear the situation quickly. Most people will just pretend to know you to keep you safe. When touching something electrical, use the back of your hand. Using your palm on, say, a live wire will cause your hand to grab it and you be unable to let go. As an electrician, just don't grab electrical things at all. Let me do it, instead. Bears can climb trees, but have trouble running down hills as they gain too much speed. If you're being chased by a bear, head for a hill rather than up a tree, or, better yet, know the signs of a bear and have bear spray if you, you know, like wandering around where there are bears. Blindfold yourself and try to find the way out of your own house. You will be surprised how hard it is to find the stairs etc. Practicing this once every 3 months will allow you to find your way out in case your house is filled with smoke from a fire, which can happen inside a minute. I don't turn on the lights at night when I go drink some water. Does this count? If you ever fall get pushed down from the platform onto the rails at a subway station, try to roll under the platform. Many stations have space there, like little overhang, for exactly that reason. Well my country sure want people to die that way. They've got space under there but have blocked it up with a big metal fence. Swimming. No seriously if you life in a country with lots of rivers, lakes and bridges, swimming is rather important. Or even if you're in a completely landlocked area, it's still a great life skill to have in case you go to a pool or beach anywhere. Water can look both shallow and calm while being exactly none of those things. Whoa, you made it to the end? You're a ducking beast. I'll cut you a deal. Smash like and subscribe for more curated content bruh. It's free and that's a great price.